change something. If we all got on the same message and we were all putting out the same vibe as far as, you know, possibly asking for um, somebody to to see that there there is something greater than themselves. One specific person that you know, possibly my sister there, that there is a God, that there is something greater than her, and she, you know, it would be great for her to find that. If we put our three heads together, or even more people at that specific time in that very moment, is it possible to? you know, really influence a person that way? You know, I, I suppose it would be considered even miracles. As, you know, you're talking about shrinking tumors. Is it is it possible, do you suppose, if we all were doing the same thing at that same time? Well, you just covered a lot of ground. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> with, uh, with that, so there are about three different questions that I'm hearing in there. But the, the bottom line is this field will mirror back what it is that we're feeling. So... The, probably uh, rather than asking that something happen, the, the key, the, the language the field recognizes is to feel as if it's already happened. So that's number one. Number two, my experience is uh, that it is probably not going to be successful to, to try to convince or persuade anyone of anything uh, because people just don't work that way. The best thing to do is just to live whatever it means in, in your life and by example other people Often will will pick up the the non <clears throat> excuse me the nonverbal uh, cues um, and and number three yes it, what the experiments have shown is where where multiple people come together in a, a common shared experience uh, that 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 effect can be mirrored back in into their lives or the bodies of their loved ones uh, the key is once again to to feel as if rather than asking for. And just think about this. When you ask for something to happen, and it's important this makes sense before we hang up, when you ask for something, even when it's well-intentioned, if you're asking for the healing to be here now, for example, or, or for peace to be in our world, what you've just implied is it's not there right now because you're asking for it to happen. And this field is very literal. It will mirror back the fact that it is not there now. Or if, if you say, I want something to happen, the field will say, okay, I'll let you want and want and want. It's a literal field is what the experiments have shown. So, so the key is to be very uh, specific and to be very uh, precise in the outcome, uh, very clear about what that outcome is, and to feel if that, as if that outcome has already happened. Great. Thank you for the response. Let's go west of the Rockies. You're on Coast to Coast. It's your turn. Hi there. Hello, gentlemen. Good morning. Good evening, West of the Rockies. You're in our part of the world. Yes. Well, uh, uh, Greg, yes. I have an interesting question to ask you, and uh, thanks to my friend Sandy. Now this message will be heard through millions. Uh, with love being the most powerful emotion known to mankind, if we were to express collectively our thoughts with love to all those who we cared about, our dear and loved ones, and then we thought about those who we didn't like, disliked, and we sent them love. What would the preponderance of the effects be? Well, there's, there's two keys to what you're saying, and, and the first is that love is a feeling. So and that's not happening in your mind. You're thinking about something in your mind, and into that thing you are pumping, you're imbuing that thought with the power of emotion that comes from, from your heart. So love is the feeling. Uh, and rather than it be sp uh, specific, it can be, um, what what happens is the, the field mirrors back very literally what it is that, that we're feeling, and you don't have to send it anywhere. It's it's already there. Uh, and this is precisely what, what the studies were showing with the, with the DNA. It's what they were showing with um, uh, the experiments in the Middle East, whether it's love or whether it's peace, uh, whatever it is. So, uh, so you can um, – you can create those effects. However, unless those individuals are open and willing uh, to receive that experience, uh, the effects may be short-lived. And, and that's, that's the, the key. Uh, uh, and, and when people are talking about imposing their will through this field, we can be very well-intentioned and send, uh, offer our love to, to our loved ones. And, and the flip side of that equation is, they have to be open and, and willing and ready to receive that love. 
And we equally do that to people we transgressed in our past to seek release and restitution and send them love? We we can, and we have to be uh, also at a point of of moving beyond the judgment and the ego. I mean, as a scientist, this is a very different realm for me to be talking about. Uh, And it's what the studies are showing. The, The emotions are most effective when we're not in a place of judgment or ego, which means we're okay whether we see the effects or not. I mean, that's the irony. The irony is that that when we have the power to create these effects, the greatest power comes from the least ego and attachment to the outcome, if that makes any sense at all. It's well, well I had to ask that as in the movie What Dreams uh, May Come oh, from sure. Classic. Williams. It, it seemed apparent that those who we suffer, we create our own hell, if you will, you know, in the afterlife, because we didn't have final release of all the things we've done transgressed, and we carry that guilt. So if we release all our transgressions with love to those who we've transgressed, you know, who've done us wrong, we done them wrong back, say, and that would seek release, so we're forgiven. We feel that peace. So we, we, we can, can now, now, I, now I know where the, where the question's coming from. Sure, we... We can do that. The key is to be able to do that. We have to know that we have to know that that is possible. We have to understand how this works, and not everyone uh, has that understanding right now. So, and, and I usually think about you know love being like the example of Fritz Lang's uh, Metropolis. The message was clear there. I mean, it, it, the, the uh, between the head and hands, there has to be a mediator, and that mediator has to be heart. Sure. And it's kind of odd because that came out of Germany prior to, you know, the rise of Nazi empire, but they forgot about that message. And so I'm hoping that we will remember that message that I'm, you know, messaging to everybody on coast Mm. to think about that clearly. Well, well, I I believe we are, and I think, uh, again, we spoke about this earlier, 